It's the summer of 1940 and Britain is all that stands in the way of German victory in Europe. You are in command of a squadron of aircraft and across a series of missions, you will strive to shoot down enemy aircraft, destroy key structures, sink ships and escape danger in Undaunted Battle of Britain, which was designed by David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin and published by Osprey Games, who sponsored this video. Hi everyone, my name is Candace Harris from Board Game Geek. We've got pilots to command, so let's get down to the table to learn how to play Undaunted Battle of Britain. Undaunted Battle of Britain is a two-player deck-building game of aerial World War II combat where you and your opponent play through a series of different missions commanding a squadron of aircraft. Undaunted Battle of Britain features a variety of scenarios with different modular game board setups and victory objectives. Each round you'll play cards to take actions such as moving your aircraft, attacking your opponent, adding new cards to your deck to reinforce your units, and more. The first player to complete a victory objective for the scenario you're playing wins the game. Before we gear up our pilots, let's go over the setup for Undaunted Battle of Britain. To begin setup, first choose a scenario from the scenario book. It's recommended that you play the scenarios in order, starting with scenario one, but they can be played in any order. For the purposes of this video, I'll be setting up scenario one, first contact. Have both players choose a side and take all cards and combat counters indicated in the scenario book for their chosen side. Find the tiles listed under the chosen scenario and place them land side up as indicated in the scenario book. Then place the remaining tiles ocean side up to create the rest of the board and return all unused tiles to the box. Next, you'll place the combat counters, structure markers, ship markers, anti-aircraft artillery markers, cloud markers, and barrage balloon markers in the hexes indicated in the scenario book. Make sure all aircraft and ships are facing in the direction shown in the scenario book and are the correct side up. Give the initiative marker to the side indicated in the scenario book. To create your starting deck, find the starting cards table in the scenario book for your side. Take all the cards marked D, shuffle them, and place the deck face down. Then find all cards marked S for your side and place them nearby, face up, sorted by title to create your supply. Your supply of cards is open information. Now that your deck and supply are set up for the scenario, return all leftover cards for your side to the box. Now you're ready to take the skies and outmaneuver the opposition. Each scenario of Undaunted Battle of Britain is played over a series of rounds where both players will play cards to move aircraft, attack the enemy, and work towards their objectives. Each round is divided into three phases. First you'll draw cards, then you'll determine initiative, and then each player will take a turn playing cards in their hand, starting with the player who has the initiative. Once the last phase is complete, the round is over and the next round begins. You'll continue playing round after round until a player has won by completing their objective for the scenario. In the draw cards phase, both players draw four cards from their deck to form a hand. If you ever need to draw a card when your deck is empty, shuffle your discard pile into a deck. You should never shuffle cards in your play area into a deck. In the determine initiative phase, both players secretly select one card from their hand and reveal it simultaneously. The player who selected the card with the highest initiative takes the initiative marker, flipping it so it shows their side's icon. That player will perform actions first during this round. In the case of a tie, the player who already has the initiative marker keeps the initiative. Then, both players discard their chosen card. Next, in the player turns phase, the action kicks off. The player with the initiative marker plays cards from their hand, one at a time, into a play area in front of them. Once you have no more cards in your hand that you can or wish to play, your turn ends. Then you'll place any cards left in your hand and all cards in your play area into your discard pile. You cannot save cards in your hand for future rounds. Then the player without the initiative takes their turn in the same way. Since this is a deck building game and a lot of what you're doing in the game is driven by the cards you play, Let's take a look at a few card examples so you know what you're looking at when you have your hand of cards. There are three different types of cards in Undaunted Battle of Britain. Combat cards represent pilots and aircraft under your command and each is associated with a combat counter. Here you'll see the card title indicating the type of aircraft as well as the section the aircraft belongs to. 
If the aircraft is an ace, you'll see a star here indicating its rank designation. In the top left corner of every card, not just combat cards, you'll find an initiative number, which is the value of the card when it's used to bid for initiative. The bottom of the card shows the aircraft's movement value, as well as actions available when playing the card. The name and image of the pilot or crew is included for flavor, and there's also an image of the aircraft the card corresponds to, which matches the associated combat counter. Communications cards represent support staff on the ground and other assets at your disposal. These cards also have a title, section, initiative number, and actions similar to combat cards. You'll find the bolster, inspire, guide, coordinate, and command actions on the comms cards. You'll also find two icons that aren't on combat cards, and they'll be relevant if the card's associated section is out of communication, or out of comms as it's referred to in the game. A section is out of comms if the two aircraft in it are separated by more than one hex. For example, this aircraft is three hexes away from this one, so their section is out of comms. A section is also out of comms if one or both aircraft in this section have been neutralized. I'll explain what it means to have an aircraft neutralized later, but trust me, you want to avoid this happening to you. For now, all you need to know is you may not take a card action that has this icon next to it if the corresponding section is out of comms. And if you see this icon and the card's associated section is out of comms, Taking actions or using the card to bid for initiative will force you to take a discord card. Which brings me to the last type of card you'll find in Undaunted Battle of Britain. Discord cards represent breakdowns in communication that are caused by the chaos of battle and made worse by splitting up your sections. Discord cards cannot be used for anything except to bid for initiative. On your turn, when you play a combat card, you must take a move action and then you may take a card action. You can do these in either order, but you always must move. It makes sense, right? You wouldn't want your aircraft to stop moving and fall out of the sky, right? <laughs> when you play a communications card, you must either take a card action or go dark, but you may not do both. When you go dark, return that card to your supply. It won't be part of your deck until you choose to take a bolster action to add it to your deck again. Now is a good time for me to explain how you perform the different actions in Undaunted Battle of Britain. Let's start with movement. Again, when you play a combat card, you must move the corresponding aircraft. Each combat card will have a move value next to the move action on the card. Move the aircraft's combat counter at least one hex and up to a number of hexes according to its movement value in the direction it's facing. You may not change the direction the aircraft is facing unless you first perform the maneuver action. You can move aircraft into and through hexes containing any other tokens. However, if you move into a hex that contains a barrage balloon, which is a type of marker you'll find in some scenarios, the aircraft is instead neutralized. In that case, you'd remove its combat counter from the board and remove all matching cards from your play area, hand, deck, discard, and supply. Unless the scenario says otherwise, aircraft cannot move off the edge of the board. If an aircraft would move off the board, Instead, choose a hex edge immediately to the left or right of the one it's currently facing and turn the counter to face that edge. Do not move the aircraft any further, then take a discard card from the supply and place it in your discard pile. You may not take a card action with the combat card after moving in this way, but you may take a card action before. If you want to change the direction an aircraft is facing, you can take the maneuver action. You must announce that you're taking a maneuver action before you take the move action on the same card. The maneuver action modifies your move action by allowing you to turn the aircraft up to a number of times based on the maneuver value. You may only turn the aircraft immediately after you have moved it at least one hex, and you may not maneuver twice in a row. Each maneuver must be separated by at least one hex movement. To turn the aircraft once, Rotate it 60 degrees to face the hex edge immediately to the left or right of the one it's currently facing. For example, if I wanted to move and maneuver with this card, I would first announce that I'm taking the maneuver action, then I could move a Y2 aircraft one hex forward and maneuver one. After that, I could move the aircraft up to two more hexes and maneuver one more time if I wanted to. If the maneuver action is followed by a number with a star, you can maneuver once before moving through any hexes, which would count towards the number of maneuvers your card allows as usual. 
The bolster action allows you to take a number of cards from your supply based on the action value and add them to your discard pile. If the card specifies a section, you must choose cards from that section only. With the command action, you can draw up to a number of cards from your deck based on the action value and add them to your hand. Then you can play those cards as normal this turn. As I mentioned earlier, if your deck runs out before you finish drawing, shuffle your discard pile into a deck and continue drawing. But you should never shuffle any cards from your play area into your deck. To coordinate, choose a discard card from your hand and remove it from the game. It will not be used for the rest of the scenario. This is the only way to remove discard cards from your deck. After you remove a discard card, draw a card from your deck. This card can be played as normal this turn, similar to when you draw cards with the command action. When you take the guide action, choose a ready aircraft and move it one hex in the direction it's currently facing. Then you may turn the aircraft to face the hex edge immediately to the left or right of the one it's currently facing. If the card specifies a section, you must choose aircraft from that section only. With the inspire action, you choose a combat card in your play area and you get to play it again. As usual, you must take a move action and you may take a card action with the chosen card and you can do these in either order. Again, if the card specifies a section, you must choose cards from that section only. There are some scenarios where you'll have ship markers on the board and a sail action on your cards. To perform the sail action, choose any number of ship markers and move each ship one hex in the direction it's facing. Unlike aircraft, ships never change the direction they're facing. Ships may move into hexes containing any other tokens, and if a ship would move off the edge of the board, it instead escapes, which is relevant for some scenario objectives. As you would expect in a competitive World War II game, there are a few combat actions you'll find on your cards which will help you take down your opponent. These are the attack, anti-air, and bomb actions. They each follow the same combat procedure, but they function in slightly different ways. First, you'll choose a target, then you'll determine the target's defense value, then you'll roll attack dice and determine the results. I'll explain how each of these steps work for the different types of combat actions. When choosing a target for an attack action, choose a non-grounded enemy aircraft in a hex that is in the firing line of the aircraft taking the action. Non-grounded means the combat counter is face up on its ready side and not out of action on its dash side. Only RAF combat counters can be grounded. If a Luftwaffe combat counter has its dash side facing up, it's suppressed and can still be attacked. When it comes to firing lines, you'll find these on each aircraft's combat counter. In each direction indicated by a firing line, all hexes in a straight line from the aircraft are considered to be in the firing line. Firing lines are not blocked by other aircraft or tokens in their paths. Also, an aircraft's firing line always includes the hex that it is in. For an anti-air action, you can choose any enemy aircraft as your target. And for the bomb action, you choose a ship, structure, anti-aircraft artillery marker, or a grounded RAF aircraft that is in the same hex as your attacking aircraft. After you've chosen your target, you need to determine the total defense value. For an attack action, an aircraft's total defense value is the sum of its base defense, the cover bonus, and the range bonus. The base defense is the value printed on the combat counter or marker. For the cover bonus, you'll add one for every other aircraft in a hex between the attacker and the target, including the attacker's hex and the target's hex, but not including the target or attacker. You'll also add two for each cloud in a hex between the attacker and the target, including the attacker's hex and the target's hex. And you'll add two for each barrage balloon in a hex between the attacker and the target. The range bonus is the number of hexes away from the attacker that the defender is, not including the attacker's hex. For an anti-aircraft action, an aircraft's total defense is the sum of its base defense and the range bonus, and the attacker is considered to be the closest anti-aircraft artillery marker for the purpose of determining range bonuses. For a bomb action, the total defense value of a structure, ship, anti-aircraft artillery, or an out-of-action aircraft is its base defense. Regardless of which type of combat action you're performing, if the total defense value of an aircraft is greater than 10, the combat action cannot succeed. So if that's the case, you might want to choose a different action. After you've figured out your target's defense value, you'll roll a number of dice indicated by the value of the combat action. 
If any of the dice rolled show a number that is equal to or greater than the target's total defense value, the attack is successful. The number of dice that are successful does not matter, and I will point out that a zero result is a 10. Unlike previous Undaunted games, there are no automatic successful hits in Undaunted Battle of Britain. You might notice that some attack actions are followed by multiple values. If you're taking an attack action with an aircraft that has a value in a black circle and a value in a pink circle, check if you are attacking the target's rear. If you are attacking the target's rear, roll the pink circle value of dice. Otherwise, roll a number of dice equal to the black circle value. You are attacking the target's rear if the target and the attacker are in different hexes and the target is facing in the opposite direction to the attacker, including if the target was facing the hex edge immediately to the left or right. If the attack was unsuccessful, meaning all of the dice you rolled had a result lower than the defense value, nothing happens. If the attack was successful, the results of the attack depend on the type of target and the type of combat action. If you were successful and the combat action was an attack, you have inflicted a hit and your opponent must find a card that matches the defending aircraft and remove it from the game. If possible, they must remove the card from their hand, otherwise they'll remove it from their discard pile. And if the card is not in their discard pile, they'll have to remove it from their deck and then shuffle their deck. If they don't have a matching card in their deck, the aircraft is instead neutralized. In that case, you would remove its combat counter from the board and remove all matching cards from the supply. You can only ever inflict one hit with an attack, no matter how many dice are successful. Also, you can always check cards that you remove from the game, but you cannot check cards that your opponent has removed. If the combat action was an anti-air action, no hits are inflicted, Instead, flip the defending combat counter to its out of action side. If it's already out of action, then nothing happens. If the combat action was a bomb action, the out of action aircraft is neutralized. Remove its combat counter from the board and remove all matching cards from your opponent's hand, discard, deck, and supply. Ouch. If a bomb action was successful and your target was a structure, ship, or anti-aircraft artillery, you have destroyed the target so you'll remove the marker. That sums up the different actions you'll find on cards in Undaunted Battle of Britain. And remember, when you're playing cards on your turn, with combat cards you must take a move action and you may take a card action in either order, and when you play a communications card, you must take a single card action or go dark. And when you see this icon for a card action or on the initiative value and the corresponding section is out of comms, take a discard card from your supply and place it in your discard pile. If the aircraft section is out of comms, you cannot take an action with this icon. And since the section is out of comms if the two aircraft are separated by more than one hex, if one or both aircraft in the section have been neutralized, they'll permanently be out of comms. The game continues round after round until a player achieves their objective and wins the game. Each scenario will tell you the victory objective for each side. Sometimes you'll have to neutralize specific enemy aircraft by attacking your opponent with combat actions. If that's your objective, when you neutralize an aircraft, place its combat counter in front of you to show that you've done so. Other times, you might need to destroy ships and structures with the bomb action. In that case, remove its marker from the board and place it in front of you to show that you've done so. For some scenarios, you need aircraft or ships to escape. To escape with an aircraft, you have to move it from one of the escape hexes indicated in the scenario. To escape with a ship, you have to move it from a hex at the edge of the map. Only the aircraft and ships specified by the scenario are allowed to escape. When an aircraft or a ship escapes, place its combat counter or marker in front of you. Also, when an aircraft escapes, find all of its associated combat cards that are face up on the table, in your hand, in your deck or discard pile, and in the supply, and remove all those cards from the game. If you removed an aircraft from the board because it was neutralized, it has not escaped. Lastly, you may also have an objective where you have to score a number of points to win the game. And that's how you play Undaunted Battle of Britain. Undaunted Battle of Britain is a tense yet super fun hybrid deck building war game that'll have you sitting at the edge of your seat the entire game. If you're already familiar with other games in the Undaunted series, Battle of Britain will feel similar in many respects, but introducing aircraft into the series adds such a fresh new twist. 
Since the aircraft have to keep moving and you'll have to maneuver them to position yourself for attacking, it really adds a whole new level of strategic depth to the series while still being just as accessible. Also, each of the 11 scenarios included have a different feel, which packs a ton of variety into the game. If Undaunted Battle of Britain looks like a game you'd enjoy, be sure to check out its page on Board Game Geek to learn more. I'm Candace Harris from Board Game Geek, and that is how you play Undaunted Battle of Britain. Have a wonderful day.